December 26, Tuesday, 2017, and we're back to work. We're back on track with the right day, 341 in a Donald Trump Zionist regime. Well, that's what Donald Trump said yesterday. Donald Trump said yesterday he was going back to work today. And what, yeah, it says right here, Donald Trump golfing a day after he tweets, Make America great again. Trust me, America. Trust me. I'll be back to work tomorrow. You can bet the farm on it. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. You don't have a farm anymore. This is probably a perfect example of the whole year of the Donald Trump Zionist regime. And he tells the American people one thing, and the next day he does something entirely different. I mean, you could say that he's senile, that he's... um. He's just playing with us, or he's lying to us, or he's insane, or he's a psych. I mean, there's so many things you could describe this man, but bottom line is, he lied to the American people again. I mean, he, he doesn't really care if he lies to American people. He's, I'll be back to work tomorrow. What's he think? The American people are going to be watching the Kardashians and football and baseball and basketball, and they're not going to notice? <laughs> the American people are not going to notice that, hell no, he didn't go back to work. He went golfing. Golfing, CNN captures. I mean, CNN's all. See, I don't think I don't know how Donald Trump thinks he's going to get away with anything. He's the president of the United States. He's probably got a million cameras looking for him. How does Donald Trump think that he's going to sneak in around a golf and the American people are not going to find out about it? I mean, just tell us the truth. Come, on. I'm in Mar-a-Lago. I mean, war a lago and I'm going to be golfing for my little Christmas vacation. I don't care what anybody said. Just tell Americans the truth, for God's sake. He's he's uh well, he's self-conscious. D Donald Trump's self-conscious, but I think it, maybe he even likes to lie. Maybe he gets off by lying to the American people, thinking he can get away with it. All right, the big story today is uh, one of Donald Trump's used to be Donald Trump's right-hand man, Corey. Lewandowski and the singer Joy Villa, Villa says that um, she, she, he sexually assaulted her. I believe she even filed a, a police report. She must not have gotten that big movie role that Trump promised her. <laughs> There's one thing about these Goodmans and these I'm in charge these guys. They, uh, They'll promise you the moon to get what they want. And then, of course, they don't call you back. And, of course, the girls get a little upset. But there's one thing, about, like I said, there's one thing about these uh, Hollywood guys. There's a certain type they're attracted to. So here she is. She did not get the big phone call from the Hollywood producer that she thought she was going to get. So she's going to flip. And she's going to spill the beans on how it works and... Hollywood and politics and well there was a there was a time in America where if the defense lawyer showed pictures like this I mean the law or the judge would probably just slam the gavel down and say case closed um and don't worry sweetheart you'll never work in this town again and the boys well the boys will continue to spend 91 million dollars of taxpayer money on golf trips yeah just go find a waitress job so it looks like Tiffany and Ivanka Trump are mocked for their bikini-clad video. I still don't know why Ivanka sits around and takes this abuse. Why doesn't she just go back to Manhattan to the cocktail parties? These Trumps, might, they must really like abuse. So we got uh, Steve Bannon here. He says everything that's wrong with the White House is Javanka. That's correct. Steve Bannon is also, uh, well, the Archbishop is criticizing Steve Bannon. He says it's laughable, it's laughable about that the Catholic Church needs illegal immigrants to put money in the basket. <laughs> the Catholic Church must be really, really in trouble. Or they're, it's, what is it called? Um, spin. The spin job, uh, public relations. I mean, it, it, a five-year, a fifth grader could figure it out. Of course the Catholic Church needs illegal aliens. And, and what happens, uh, sometimes they take uh, refuge in a church, and a church protects them. It's, I don't even know why the Catholic Church tries to deny it. It's, it. They look stupid. The Catholic Church looks stupid to even deny it. Here we have Mueller may indict Paul Manafort again. This is going to be a superseding indictment. Maybe they got some... 
more information on Jared Kushner. And, uh, well, we'll see. I really have my, uh, my gut feeling that somehow everything, uh, everything with gut, uh, Jared Kushner will be brushed under the rug and there'll be a few Gentiles prosecuted. That's my gut feeling. A few Gentiles will be prosecuted and the rest of them will go on spending $91 million on golf trips. Yes, thank you, taxpayers. Okay, well, this is interesting, but I don't think it's a good omen for the Donald Trump Zionist regime. They're going to cut down a tree that was planted about 190 years ago by Andrew Jackson. Not a good omen at all. So we'll just wind this segment down looking for some interesting news. Now, here's the thing. They say Chinese ships are illegally selling oil to North Korea. Here's the thing. If the Chinese do it, it's not illegal, is it? Remember when America used to say that? We're America. If we do it, it's not illegal. That's what our government says, right? Tit for tat, they say. That's why you treat people good, because you never know when you might be on the bottom and China might be on the top. Amazon and Google employees busted in an Asian sex trafficking sting. Well, I got an idea. How about freedom? Freedom to do with your body as you choose. Make prostitution legal, and you would get the criminals out of it, wouldn't you? Yes, there are some women who would go into prostitution willingly. They do it in Nevada, legal brothels. And of course, then you could have government people. You could actually have a government job where they tested the girls for venereal diseases. And it would be safe for both sides. You'd have a transaction. The girl wants to sell something, the man wants to buy something, and you would not have any sex trafficking. But hey, don't tell that to the government because those, our illustrious leaders, are nothing but morons and idiots. Well, they also make fees and fines, and they make money on the, they make money on the sting operation. Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to put a stop to the gravy train for the lawyers and the vice squads and the judges and the de defense attorneys. Well, okay, let's not go in. Let's not beat a dead horse. The UK is begging the prince, please do not invite that guy. Please don't, please don't invite that guy. I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, hey, they got, you know, they got a reputation to uphold. Uh, let's talk about this for a second. So a lot of people think that Meghan Markle will be the first black to be, you know, welcomed into the royal family, but... That's not totally true, so the legend, the rumor says. I mean, she will definitely be the first African-American to gain access to the royal family. But they also, a long time ago, there was a Princess Sophie Charlotte, and she became the first black queen. So they say, it's a rumor. Um, this is a picture of her back she was born in 1744. Now, the rumor is that she came from a black branch of the Portuguese royal family. Now, there may be, you know, critics say that you have to go back nine to 15 generations to find any Moors in her bloodline. But the thing people don't really realize is that the Moors were more like Arab people. I mean, they a lot of people get that confused. You've seen the movie True Romance, where Christopher Watkins is going back and forth about the Moors I uh, won't go into that, but the bottom line is the Moors were from North Africa, but they were more of an Arabic type, and I'm, I know I'm kind of going off subject here, but this is a historic moment here where the royal family of England is going to be marrying in with a African-American girl from America. I mean, it's sort of a historic thing here, and I can't help but notice the similarities between Meghan Markle, who, you know, it seems like she's very beautiful and everybody loves her, and the Princess Diana, which was, you know, loved by the people. I cannot help but see the similarities that, you know, time and history is repeating itself, and uh, Princess Diana, uh, she ended up getting a divorce because it did not work out and many people would think that this will not work out and hey, young people will do what young people do. But it, it is a historic moment and we should probably document it. So here we have, well, everybody wants a piece of Harvey Weinstein. Yes, I mean, how do you, how do you Americanos say what that comes around goes around? Yeah, everybody wants a piece of Harvey Weinstein. 
what else we have here? Um, oh, people are asking me, why aren't you talking about Donald Trump's new executive orders? And I probably should because this is, this is very serious news. I mean, some things that these presidents do behind the scenes and nobody talks about it. Now, there might be a lot of Bible thumpers out there, Alex Jonestein fans, that think this is all good and well. Yeah, let Donald Trump seize Obama's assets and Hillary Clinton's assets. I mean, but this is dangerous grounds. I mean, take it from a man who knows. I mean, you go way back to the 1980s. What did the government do? Yes, we'll start seizing the assets of the mafia. And everybody says, oh yeah, take the mafia stuff, it doesn't matter. But then what happens is you're driving down the road on vacation, and the police pull you over, and they seize all your assets. I mean, it's, you know, it's called civil assets forfeitures. So what happened back to the mafia in the 1980, where everybody said, yeah, let them seize the mafia's assets. And now the police are coming into your house, knocking down your door. They're not even charging you with a crime. And, and then they take your stuff. It's called civil asset forfeiture. So, yes, I would like Hillary Clinton and Obama and the rest of the criminals to, you know, pay their debt to society. But you've got to be careful. When the government can seize your stuff, that's not good news. I mean, that's what happened in the Roman, the downfall of the Roman Empire. Don't, let's not ever forget this. When the Roman Empire was collapsing, the Roman soldiers went into the citizens' house and just took what they wanted because they needed it. That was the fall of the Roman Empire. And, of course, what we're looking at today is the fall of the Zion Empire. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm sure it did. Have you ever seen evil so personified in any witch that ever came from the United States of America. Okay, let's get back on track here. AT&T announces thousands will be laid off. Wasn't long ago they pledged, yes, we will hire as many of the unwashed masses as we can. But they're going to lay off some people. 200,000 people get bonuses. Thank you to the Donald Trump tax reform. But uh, th th thousands, literally thousands are going to be laid off. Hey, you go up and you go down. We had a good run. America had a good run, and then we got greedy. Well, no, we didn't get, the American people didn't get greedy, but the people in politics got greedy. Taxes out the yin-yang, and AT&T is going to cut 80,000 jobs in five years. Huh. Yeah, we just have to document it. I mean, but what was the big news to this year? Dotard versus Rocket Man. I mean, this we got 95 million Americans out of the workforce. People getting laid off left and right. But what does the Dotard focus on for the whole year? If he wasn't in Egypt or Israel or Saudi Arabia or China or on the golf course. If he wasn't spending ninety one million dollars of the American taxpayers' money on golfing I mean think about it. Ninety one million dollars on golf trips. I mean but how is he going to divert the attention away? Oh, I'm spending a hundred million dollars on golf trips. How am I going to divert the attention away from the unwashed masses? Okay, I'll call him Rocket Man. When everybody else is calling him Tubby Tyrant. You see, I think Kim got a little upset with the term Tubby Tyrant. He didn't like it, so he made a phone call to the CIA. Listen, if you want me to keep on cooperating, make sure mainstream media eliminates that Tubby Tyrant thing. Don't like it. After he made the phone call to the CIA, what did Donald Trump come up with? Okay, Donald Trump was instructed to call him, oh, call him Rocket Man, Mr. President. And then Rocket Man calls him Dotard. And you see how the, diver the diversion was beautiful. There's literally millions of Bible thumpers out there that think that North Korea is the problem with America. There are no factories on the Ohio River. There are no furniture factories in South Carolina, the whole damn country's going to hell in a handbasket, and the Bible thumpers think it's Persia and North Korea. Did I mention that huge factory that broke ground today in America that could employ 10,000 American deployments? Did I mention it? No, because Rocket Man and Dotard are going back and forth like some reality TV show from hell.